Here's an interview that a lot of y'all might have missed that we want y'all to take a listen to from my boy Eric B. Eric B was the guy that was going to be running the Death Row East. And y'all can hear this conversation between him and John and I. And it should be a good listen to for y'all. We want y'all to take a listen to it. This is Eric B. Who was going to be the, the president of Death Row East. Okay, so uh, first of all, we're going to go, um, could you tell us about the formation? Because most of y'all don't know, and I've been telling y'all, Eric B. was very instrumental, and in, in, in he was around. Matter of fact, let me just show y'all the relationship, because this is mainly a Tupac form, and they love Tupac. I'll show y'all the love that Pac had for Eric B. It was this video shoot called How Do You Want It? And Pac came to me and was like, Rich, the only artist or a person affiliated with Death Row that can come on set on this on this particular video shoot, other than Casey, JoJo, you know, of course, you, whatever, is Eric B. He mm -hmm. said, that's the only person that I want you to let on the set. And so I'm just trying to show y'all yeah. how the... It definitely was a close set. Yeah, it was definitely a close set. How much respect he had to eat. Yeah. But um, yeah. Yeah, I my want you to go That's my little brother. Yep. I won't, so I just want to show them how much respect he had for you. Um, but if you can just go ahead and go into the Death Row East, the formation of it, because I know that was pretty much your your, your creation in my mind from what I knew, what Shug always told me, uh, you know, or at least talking with Pac and everything. If you can just talk about the Death yeah. Row East thing. Yeah, what happened one day, Pac was like, hey, we, we got to do a label. We got to do this. We got to do that. And he went back. To Shook and Interscope and said, man, Eric, you know, our East Coast counterpart, man, we got to do a label. And I told him, I said, the only way it can be effective, you know, I said, let's call it Death Row East. And they looked at me and said, hey, what did you just say? I said, Death Row East. I said, y'all already got Death Row West. I said, let's do Death Row East. Then we'll do Death Row South. Then we'll go Midwest. And I said, we'll, we'll break it down into regions. Let's start out with East and then we'll go South. Then we'll go to the different regions. But but nobody, what a lot of people didn't know, our first artist on Death Row East was Craig Mack. We we pulled the crew and got Craig Mack right after Flavor in Your Ear. He only had a one album deal with Puff, mm -hmm. and you know we turned around and got him got him right there after he was hot with Flavor in Your Ear. And the next album he was going to put out was, was going to be on Death Row. Mm -hmm. And we had we had just a, just a whole lot of stuff that we we were doing that would have shocked the world. Exactly. So, I mean, there was just a lot of a lot of business stuff that we did behind the scenes. You know, all the lawyers that we knew, mm -hmm. you know, we knew we knew where everybody's contract was. We know how to get out the contract, or, or or see who you know who had an existing contract that we could could have took over. But Craig Mack was actually the first first person that was on Death Row East. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and I kind of told them this story, but it just come. You know, coming from somebody certified like you, is, is, is you know, just put the icing on the cake. Now, E. I mean, me but Reg, you was there, so you know, Reg, you was there. I don't know why they would doubt you. You was there. Yeah, well, you know how it goes. But, E, could you tell <laughs> us, if you could tell us um, about, well, let's go into the the, the, the Bryan Park thing. Um, were you there with, with, with the situation with Nas when we, when we all kind yeah, of... Yeah, so what, so... So let me take you. Let me take you back. So okay. before we went into Bryant Park, I, I mean, a lot of things happened. A lot of things happened uh, that Thursday, all the way to the Saturday. Uh, you know, it just just was it just. Uh, you know, I'll never forget what happened. So Bryant Park, I had a conversation with Pac, and Pac kept saying, "Yo, man, Nas, Nas, Nas." He was so adamant about fighting Nas. So I told him, I said, "Yo, Pac, let me explain something to you." I said, Nas, Nas is my little brother. You're my little brother. I said, well, let me give you some big brother advice. When somebody tells you they don't want no problems, I said, and I gave him an analogy. I said, it's just like a, it's just like a, a dog. You keep poking him, he, he might shrivel. You know, one guy, he might bite the stick. Next thing you keep poking him, he's going to bite you. And I said, Nas told you he don't want no problems. I said, when somebody's telling you they got respect for you and don't want no problems, stop pushing the issue. I said, the kid said he don't want no problems with you. He's never had no problems with you. He has that utmost respect for you. Why do you keep trying to make it this a problem? 
he thought because Nas was on the on on a record with somebody else, Nas didn't know what everybody else was rhyming about. They gave Nas the record blind, and he just put his lyrics on it. And then the the beginning of the record, they was dissing Tupac, and he didn't he didn't know nothing about it until the record came out. So him and Tupac were at were at odds over the, over that record. But one thing I will say that a lot of people don't know, after him and Nas met in the park, he was going to scrap the whole album. The album that he put out, he was going to scrap the, the song, whole album. The song, yeah, the song was going Yeah, he was going yeah, to scrap. He was going to scrap. He said, Eric, this is what we're going to do. When we get back on Monday, we get back on Monday after the fight, after we go to the Tyson fight, we're going to uh, we're gonna fly Nas in, and me and Nas are going to do an album together. I'm going to ask Nas, could we do an album together? I heard that conversation. So, you know, they... they I heard him tell Shug that. Yeah, so they, yeah, so you know they they squashed it, and and he came back to me and said, "Yo, E, man, you was right, man. Nas is one of the nicest guys in the world, man. And I was wrong, you know. I thought that he had a problem, and you know, and and I told him, I said, the kid said he don't got a problem with you, man, and and let it go. So you know, after that, you know, they, everybody met in the park, and him and Nas stepped to the side and talked for a minute. And then after that, man, he apologized, you know, he apologized to Nas. And, and they told me, he said, E, on Monday, man, let's call Nas and see if we can get him out here in L.A. Man, I want to do an album with him. Man, we're going to ride and we're going to be a family like we should have been from the beginning. 